All right, guys. Um, so I got the transmission up on the bench. I got a little bit of oozage here. Got to clean it. Um, I'm going to pop off the valve body. Um, the main reason for the valve body is to clean out all the passages um, where everything flows. Um, blow out the valve body and do all that fun stuff and then put it back together. Uh, it's key to be careful here and make sure that all of your... Um, your uh, your ball checks go back in the correct passages, especially if you've added a shift kit. Um, on some kits, it adds it tells you to put all of them in, like on the Transgo kits, I believe, depending on what mode you want. I have the BNM heavy duty race, so I think it believe I believe it only asks me to use one. So I'm gonna pop it off. But either way, I have the instructions, but I'm still gonna keep track of that. So just to alleviate things, also. Pay attention to the direction of your gasket, which way it goes. Uh, that's also important. So I'm going to start taking this down, blowing it with brake cleaner and compressed air into our shit here. And we're going to go from there, guys. Okay, so I am um, I got the valve body off, and I figured this is a good point to um, show you guys. Um, so there's a little bit of dirty fluid here. Not real gritty, just a little dirty. This is our one check ball. I remembered when I built this transmission, the shift kit I used only used one. And that's right here. And you reference it off of the pan because this pan has unique corners even though it's straight. So we got our one ball check right here. Reference there. But another reason why is I have my gasket drip drying over here. Be careful when you take these off. Otherwise... You can't reuse these. There's nothing wrong with reusing them. These are meant to stay pretty much like wet. Um, as you can see, um, you have to reference it as well. Well, there's a top and a bottom side. The Z shape goes towards the top, towards the pan, and the all the non, like uh, I guess this is just all the perforations for the holes in the passages, goes towards the bottom. Um, so that's uh, uh reference it there's a, is a top and a bottom gasket and um, i have accidentally put them on backwards uh, but uh you know you'll you'll catch it so careful when you peel these off peel it off slowly corner by corner work your way in towards the middle so you don't tear the gasket because they do get stuck in there over time um so i'm going to remove this ball check i'm going to clean up this gasket material and I'm going to start blasting the passages with a brake cleaner. And so these fluid passages all coincide with all of these holes on the pump. Um, and then obviously there's pump passages for fluid pressure to go through the clutch drum assemblies and pistons. So this is all, you know, orchestrated move. Ultimately, the valve body controls everything. So... Um, you can either go this way out or that way down, but it's easier to go down because you can just um, flip this over, use the old pan to catch everything, kind of lightly button it up on there. So after you doused everything with brake cleaner, tighten down your old pan in there, flip it over, and then use compressed air, you know, blast more, um, blast more brake cleaner through the holes, and then use compressed air to push everything out into the pan. Then once that's done, remove the pan, um, tilt it on an angle, Blast it one last time once you get all of your fluid out, and then you can go ahead and blast it with compressed air one last time. Um, obviously, this is for guys who don't have, don't have like a parts washer. Uh, and minimize your use of brake cleaner because, it, you know, it's at like four bucks a can. Luckily, CarQuest, uh, Advanced Auto had buy one, get one. So got it for two bucks a can. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then when we are ready for reassembly, um, we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to Air check the assemblies it's easy uh, there's a lot of videos on that but I'll do that anyway uh, again I'm not doing a full video on how to do all this because there's a lot a lot better videos out there uh, on how to do this by pros I'm just the backyard builder and I'm showing you guys what I look for and what I'm doing so see it all right guys um, hopefully the clarity of this video is good because I got shit on my screen and I cleaned it it looks good so I'm replacing it. I busted out my box of seals because 
Um, I literally was part way through showing you guys how to air up the the low reverse piston, which I had to take out. Uh, it's kind of a motherfucker, and you need this tool to do it. It's right here. Uh, it's like a $40 tool. This is about really the only specialty tool you really need for the Turbo 350 besides the bushing drivers, uh, which are specific to these. Um, so I busted out the seal, and I noticed it was doing something goofy when I was pumping it up. The first time I wasn't pumping, I pumped it up. I wasn't paying attention to it. But the seal at some point folded over, and you could see the bite marks. And that creates a pretty good leak. So that explains why my piston wasn't going up straight. Now, I didn't see damage to these clutches. So either I did this when I aired it up. Or it would fold back occasionally. Uh, and run fine. Or this could be our problem. Uh, I really can't tell because I did air up the transmission with like more than 30 PSI. You should be air checking them with about 30. Um, that's uh, safe. I was just giving it a quick blast with my air hose. So it's set at like 120. It's about four times as much as you need. I could have done this, but it looks like this is fairly... You know, it's sat there for a while. So that would cause a serious cross leak. And the piston was actually, um, so imagine if the clutches are inside and this piston is what applies the clutches to bite. It was only grabbing one side. So I just thought about this. So let's go over here. Let's go check out our low reverse clutches, which are these cocksuckers. They look fine, actually. There's no, you know, as I'm spreading them out, you can see them. They look good. So, I don't know, could be, could not be, but either way, I'm replacing those seals, and this is why you check. Uh, clearly, my transmission was already working, so shut up. Uh, yeah, I just told my hose to shut up. So, uh, I'm going to replace this seal, the inside seal, and the other top seal. Uh, so here's one, there's two, and I have to find the inside one. So I'm going to do that, put that back together, air check it, and this is pretty clean. We're going to start reassembling here, and then we're going to start air checking our stack. So I'm going to get to that. All right, here we go. Um, I got my uh, air compressor set down to about 30 PSI. This is the low reverse passage, and we're just going to give it a little blast. It should, it should be able to pump up. And hold a little bit of pressure and that's that's your one your low reverse so that's good now I'm gonna check clean and assemble the drum assemblies we're gonna start putting them together and we'll check those show you how we do that um, using the pump assembly so from here we're good I can start reassembling stuff um, we'll see how far we get I didn't bring my torque wrench from work so I might just put this together like tomorrow night or something, but I'll at least get all the uh, valve body and everything tightened up and I can torque everything later. Uh, really not that big of a deal. So, all right. Okay, so I, was, I showed you guys already how we check the low reverse on the case. So I'm gonna show you how to check your direct forward and your intermediate. So I'm gonna have my wife zoom it, come in over here. So. These passages on the pump here are where fluid goes through the case and it goes to its corresponding, um, you know, piston assembly. So, uh, let's see. No, that's not one. So this is this drum assembly here. It's pumping up. And it's actually holding pressure. You hear a little bit of a hissing, but that's mainly because... Keep in mind, keep in mind those ceiling rings that go through the, um, that, that are on the pump are where this passage has a seal. So we'll do the next one. 
you hear it in here. For that one, I can remove this drum assembly so you guys can see it. So I'll set this over here. And that's your, see, that one held up good, but this piston solely relies on the rubber seals to seal. These, although they do rely on the seals, they also rely on those cast iron pump rings for uh, pressure. So, that one pumps up real nice, you hear it. Yeah, and you hear the hiss in the cast iron rings in the housing of the pump. That pumps up, and of course, that one stays up, but that's my rubber tipped hose is also sealing on that and the seals in here are doing their job So it's just staying up until I pull away. So that's how you check it these two You might get a little bit of leaks, but like I said when I remove this I Could have put some grease in there to help it seal up But you see these, these rings here This is where those those you hear the hissing you don't hear it coming out of the drum assemblies where the seals are, but it comes up with the thud. And these are where you hear the hissing, but that's because there's nothing there really yet to make it seal good. So there's no fluid in there, no nothing. The, the fluid will act as a little bit as a cushion. So that's that. If you guys do this, uh, this is a way to check all of your drum assemblies, your piston assemblies. So we got the lower verse, the uh, intermediate, the direct, uh, I always confuse the, the forward and the direct. Uh, I believe this is the forward. That's direct, intermediate, low reverse. I always confuse these two. I should know by now because this is the part here that grenades on the one to two shift. Uh, you can see I replaced it with a hardened sprag. Uh, I believe this is the intermediate. Uh, the sprag explodes. Um, ideally, you want to upgrade it to a 34 element, uh, like something from like TCI or something, but for our use, this is fine. So from here, we're on to assembly, and we should be good. So, see you. All right, guys. So um, I'm making this video real fast to show you the pump. I took it apart. It was the last thing to check. And um, only thing I noticed was these gears are a little bit worn in the face here, unevenly. Um, and then I took a peek inside the torque converter. And what I saw was there was a little bit of shavings in there. So I think there might be something going on with the convert converter, maybe improperly balanced. Obviously, the torque converter... The torque converter aligns these these you know these lugs are where your torque converter engages. So you can hear right now where it's riding off of this lip. So that's what you're hearing. If this is centered, you don't hear it. Oh, you're hearing it because I can't grab it straight. But you hear it a lot less, you know, when it's centered. I'm using my callus as a means to center it, believe it or not. So, right there, good old thumb. So, as I'm rotating this, if it's centered, it doesn't write off. Now, as far as what I've read, nothing, nothing says anything about wear on the face of those teeth. Everything tells you to check. So, this is how you check, right? You pop these cocksuckers out. Alright, we're going to put them on our oil pan. And you're supposed to mesh them together. And there you go. So these should pull straight. It shouldn't pull apart. No matter where you are in the teeth, it shouldn't put a pull, pull apart. So, you know, I'm pulling them right now and they're, they're good. So, that tells you that this gear set's still good. And there's no scoring in here. So nothing major has gone through the, the pump. Um, 
So that's one of the things that these lugs, when you assemble it, have to face you because this is where the torque converter engages. So I'm thinking, goddamn air compressor decides to go off right as I'm doing this. Cocksucker. Shut up. So I think some of that debris I saw was probably off the face of these teeth. But uh, I might have caught it just in time. I'm going to clean these off. It does say on there that you can hit it with a sanding stone. Smooth everything out. And I think, uh, um, I think I'm going to send out the torque converter. Um, and I guess if it needs to get cleaned up and reset, then we'll go from there. But I thought about this the other day. That torque converter is pretty cheap. I think I might be better off buying a different one if that's the case. Um, you know, I'll, I'll have, I'm still going to have the torque converter cut because everything I've seen in the transmission and the, the pump is showing a little wear, but the torque converter engages to this pump. So I think it's the torque converter. Um, might have a little bit of an imbalance where these gears don't ride exactly straight because, you know, the there's a bushing in here that the torque converter rides on and there's also the torque converter goes into the output shaft so maybe there's a little bit of an imbalance there i have to check my end play again and maybe something is making that that uh transmission ride around a little bit or maybe it's the fact that i do have the drive shaft and in certain situations the drive shaft that is too tight pushes towards the front of the car because keep in mind when the suspension loads up it pushes the drive shaft forward due to the angle so I'm thinking that in certain situations the transmission is getting pushed up and it's it's probably driving through the output shaft input shaft and pushing stuff around um, and just certain situations where it's it's seeing that and uh, might be fucking things up and I in the past I had a drive shaft that wasn't in far enough into the output shafts and that's when I broke these pump rings um, I only was going into the into the output shaft maybe about a half an inch which isn't nearly enough um, you should be into the output shaft quite a bit you should only have about an inch to an inch and a half of a gap between the tail house and the yoke end of the drive shaft um, for proper slip and proper engagement. So I think this might have been one of those situations where I'm in the opposite end of the spectrum now. So um, yeah, I didn't really want to take the pump apart, but I had to. Lining this thing up sucks, but it's not impossible. Again, I built this transmission like six years ago, and uh, everything's held up really good. So from here, uh, I'm just going to reassemble the pump, clean it up a bit because it does have wear material there which is what you get that fine grit uh, it turns like that gray chocolatey consistency so well guys that's it for today uh, I would have put this together but I need an alignment band which I don't know where I went um, but what I also do need is um, filter screens uh, this is important uh, you, there's screens that go in the case there's a governor, uh, one of these is the governor uh, passage, I believe it's this one, it has a little screen that pushes in, and then you got your pump screen that goes through here, and then there's a couple other things I got to check, um, I have to check my, my stack clearances on the clutches, um, and I also have to check my end plate on the transmission. Um, so there is quite a bit more work before I actually put this together to properly check everything as it goes back together. Again, all this stuff was checked, and I know you're probably asking yourself, why are you checking it again? Well, I'm, I'll know that it will go back together right yet again. So everything should fall right into place. I have my notes on this transmission somewhere in the basement. But, um, yeah, I have to check the end play. I have to check, uh, you know, get my filters on. Um... And yeah, uh, we'll go back together probably throughout the week. I'm probably I'm going to order my filter screens tonight. I should be able to get them through Amazon Prime like the next day. Um, and so probably during the week, I'll be putting this thing together. 
getting it back on. And then, like I said, the torque converter, I'm just going to let it sit until we're ready to mate everything together, send it out, have it cleaned up. No big deal. So, guys, that's it for this weekend. Share, like, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. I do appreciate um, the viewership we got. Um, let us know what you guys think, suggestions, things, concerns, if something doesn't make sense, or maybe I'm a dumbass. I'm open to suggestions. I'm open to criticism. I'm not caught up on I'm correct. Uh, I'm just making do here. So we'll see you guys.